Okay, so in this video we're going to go over custom color knockout. So, like in the previous knockout hues video, uh, this is not a perfect science in that every you know image that you're going to deal with is going to give you different you know issues you're going to have to kind of contend with. Uh, so I'm doing the best I can to provide you something that will save you hopefully hours of time um, in having to edit things. So just keep that in mind. There's there, um, you know, sometimes it just kind of takes playing around to to get to a result that works for you. So the way this essentially works is you want to be able to pick your color first and make sure that it's the foreground color. And you'll know that because it's going to be the one, it's this color swatch here in the foreground. Um, so if it's not, you're going to have to swap back and forth. And a quick way to do that is by actually hitting um, so if, you're, if your color's selecting here, just swap it and make sure that you're selecting in the foreground color, or click it. Um, so if you click it, you can then, you'll see this color picker dialog. You can, you can literally look for the color here and or find it on um, anywhere in your document, okay? So for instance, let's target, um, I'm going to target like this swatch of green right here, and I'll hit OK. So the next thing, I, all I have to do is hit the custom color knockout action button. So what it's going to do, it's going to try to target that the best it's, the best it can. Uh, but keep in mind that green is going to have influence in different areas. And green, um, you know, is a pretty isolated color. But you're going to have colors like blue and cyan that are very close to each other, red and yellow. Um, especially when those colors start to blend that you're going to be contending with. You know, for instance, if you have a yellow that's close to the, you know, a blue and they're blending, that area is going to get knocked out too because what it's doing is it's looking for that specific green. I try to do the best I can to have it not pay so much attention to the values, the lightness or darkness of the color. Uh, but that is part of the equation and that's what makes this so difficult. So like I said, it's not a perfect science here, so you're going to have to kind of figure things out. So at this point, it works the same way as all the other knockouts. You're going to get a color... Um, you're going to get a, uh, a group. Inside that group you'll have the blacks, the hues, and then you'll have a mask where it's knocking it out. So at any point, if you don't want the, the darkness or lightness to be messed with, you could take that mask and drag it onto the hues layer. And you'll see that it's just knocking out the hues. So, uh, it, you know, it's the reverse case um, when we were looking at you know, the hues, the, the red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, uh, it actually got applied to the hue layer instead of the group, but this one does it to the group. Um, so keep in mind, it's modular like that. You can you can move it around to, to see what, you know, results suit you the best. So if you want it knocking out from both, make sure the mask is on the group. If you only want it applying to the color, um, try to target it there. So I'm going to leave it for both, and it works the same way as the other knockouts, is you're going to want to select the mask, Head over to Image, Adjustments, and then this time we'll use Curves. So Curves works the same way, but you can actually adjust the fall off. So you have a black and a white slider. You don't have a gray slider. But the cool thing is you could actually use the eyedroppers like you do in Levels. But let's go ahead and we'll increase the amount of knockout for that color by pushing the black towards the white. That's essentially increasing the black. So if we want to knock out that much. Now if we don't want as much... F um, of the color being pulled out in the further areas where this fall off, push the white in. Then if you feel like the edge is too harsh, there's you know different ways you can do. You can click and add a node to soften that fallout so that it, it, it falls off you know gradually here. I mean it's, it's, it's extreme because you're pushing more um, black into that light area. So you know the reverse is true as well. You can kind of push it this way if you want to, and then maybe even add another note here to make that a little softer. So it, it's, it's really up to you. Um, and if that's what you want, hit OK. And that's essentially the functionality for the custom color knockout. It's going to work the same way. So if you need to, if you like this one and you, get, you have to target another color, you're going to have to rename all the layers. You know, just introduce something. I don't care. It doesn't even have to be a bunch of characters. Just put something in there in each layer to rename it. You can then duplicate it and then come in and I believe if we target something else we'll just target this blue here. Oh, make sure you're not in the mask. Make sure you're in the RGB. So if you click this RGB inside channels you'll be back into the image. Not in the mask. Click the color. 
and we'll do custom color knockout. And you'll see it's knocking that out as well. So if you want to keep the groups, you have to go into the groups and rename the layers. Uh, if you don't care, just merge it. You know, it, it's not a big deal. So let's just delete this knockout real fast. We'll do the merge version. So here's our green with the adjustments. Command or Control E. That'll merge everything down. And then, you know, with that custom color already picked in, in our foreground color, we'll hit custom color knockout. It's going to do its thing. And there we go. Now we have the two knocked out in this version. So um, you'll have the same functionality too. Click on that mask, go to image, adjustments, levels, and you can increase the amount of knockout by increasing the amount of black. And you can increase the visibility to get closer to where that knockout is. But like I said, I'm doing the best I can given what we're dealing with as far as the math behind lightness, brightness, and hue. Hit OK. And that essentially covers our custom color knockout. Like I said, it's not a perfect science, so it's going to get you at least closer. Uh, there is some knowledge you're going to need for Photoshop to kind of get some of that stuff done. But that covers uh, the custom color knockout. In the next video, we're going to be jumping into the perfect black removal, which is kind of a sister to your knockout black. A few people had some issues before where they're trying to do the same thing where they're they don't want to remove black from everything and its influence and stuff like that this is trying its best to kind of limit the amount of black being pulled and there's three different versions you have the perfect black removal perfect black removal two and three so we'll jump into that in the next video